everybody. This is Steve Politi from NJ Advance Media. We are live here at HighPoint.com Stadium. I know it's called HighPoint.com Stadium because right now, from where I'm looking, I can see them peeling up the astro, the artificial turf, to rename the stadium from HighPointSolutions.com. We are losing the solutions, folks. I don't know if there's a joke joke in that or not, but the solutions are going away. They've got some finishing touches here in a do couple you, of days to get that. Do you think they're actually going to replace that? or is it just, <laughs> He's just going to leave that right the there, the bare spot in the field. That could be something interesting. Anyway, we're back with another uh, edition of the uh, soon-to-be-renamed podcast. Keith Sargent, James Cratcher here. Guys, uh, exciting. It is officially game week. We, we listened to Chris Ash and both coordinators today, a selection of players. Everyone's talking about the quarterback, obviously. Uh, we finally get to hear a little bit about Chris Ash's explanation for this. I mean, what, what was your main takeaway from what, he, from what he said today about the choice? I think the most important thing Chris Ash said was toward the end of his press conference when he was asked about the reasonable expectation for Art Sikowski, he made it very clear, Art is the starting quarterback. Right. And he didn't come out and say it, but he implied there are going to be mistakes made. And he's not going to yank him at the first interception and tell Gio to go in there and change the offense. They are riding with Art Sikowski. Mm-hmm. I think we had a question last week, is he going to start 10 of 12 games? Assuming he's healthy, which obviously we're going to assume at this point, I think he's going to start all 12 wow. games. I okay. think they are clearly invested in the future. And if it means they lose a game along the way, so be it. Right. I think my biggest takeaway take was the competition was a lot closer than, than anyone really knew. And that's a tribute to G, uh, Gio Rochino uh, mostly. Uh, John McNulty also said that really went down to the wire. Um, you know, I mean, we've seen a lot of uh, Gio over the years. And I think a lot of people in the Rutgers fan base have always said, well, you could do better, you could do better. But by all accounts, he, it seems like he's made a lot of improvements, which is no surprise. I mean, he's a fifth-year senior. He has 12 games under his belt. So that's probably my biggest takeaway, just the fact that, you know, Gio made a competition. Yeah, and I, I got the sense that this <clears> – <throat> obviously, this this is a decision for 2019 and 2020 as much as it is about, you know, this opening game against Texas State. But uh, I also like the, the way they talk about Art – as this mature kid, as this, you know, he's not, he is not a freshman in any sense of the language. And, you know, I, I, I talking to John McNulty, the offensive coordinator, some of the things he said about, you know, that, that if he was going to be the guy, you know, this, this was good. This is what was going to happen based on all his preparation, based on, you know, the way he trained in the off season, like, you know, that this was sort of the natural progression for him to get to win this job. And I thought that was pretty telling how much they expected from him from the moment he walked into the door, really. No, definitely. I, I think Art looks like a program quarterback. I can't say franchise was not professional. Uh, he acts like it. He talks like it. Now we have to go see if he plays like a program quarterback. Right, right. And, it, you know, he's the highest. I, I know people got on me saying, well, Tom Savage was higher ranked according to rivals or, or whatever those recruiting rankings. I go based on scholarship offers. Art had... 30, almost 30 scholarship offers. I look back, Tom Savage, I think, might have had 11 or 12. Art Sikowski is the high, uh, most highly touted, most highly sought after quarterback recruit. And in this day of age, I mean, you, you look, you're, you're looking at Nebraska, they're going with a true freshman. Minnesota's yeah. going with a true Southern freshman. Southern Cal. I mean, it's not just yeah. Big Ten. It's, yeah. it's everywhere. In this day of age, these quarterbacks, I think, are just so, you know, by the time they set foot on college campus, they, they've done so They all have quarterback coaches. And, you know, James could probably mm-hmm. speak to, you know, Tony Rassiopi, who's been working with Art, you know, pretty much since, uh, you know, he, he graduated IMG. I mean, they, they're, they're just so ready for this. Now, that being said, all of that preparation doesn't really uh, amount to anything right, until, right. you know, come, you know, noon on, on Saturday and then, you know, a week later over at the, the you know, against Ohio State. How is he going to do under lights? I mean, yep. all that preparation probably goes out the window right. when you're actually facing, like, big, a Big Ten defense or even a college football defense. They're, they're, they obviously were not going to talk numbers or put any put any totals on what, what the kid can accomplish. In your eyes, though, what is a reasonable level of expectation? I mean, what, you know, give me a number, give me some yards, give me what you think would be, all right, this is what this kid can do in year one. Okay, I'll get to the yards in a second. I'm going to, going to go back to 2006 when Mike Teal, I know he was a registered freshman, but, you know, they, they really tailored a game plan. They, they, they did, did not – and John McNulty was on staff then too, and they did not want him to lose a game. So, um, And granted, they had Ray Rice, so they had a, a lot of skill position guys. I don't know if they have that type of talent here. I certainly don't think they have a, a Ray Rice here on this roster. Right. Um, and I'll go back to 2009, you know, different offensive coordinator, but I just remember they, they, they shrunk – 
the field for, for Tom Savage. They really took until maybe mm-hmm. later in the year where they needed Tom Savage to maybe win a couple more games. They took the reins off a little bit. But I think that's what they're going to do with Arsikowski. I think John McNulty, as much as he wants to be a big play guy, is going to be smart with him. You know, yes, a yardage total, I'm going to go maybe 2,200, mm-hmm. which would be a good year. Oh, that would be geez. top you know, seven Kidding or eight all time. How many games season. have they had 200 yards last yeah. passing last year? That, that's uh, 200 yards a and, game and about. And so. I, I, here's, here's the key, though. I think, you know, touchdowns might be, you know, 12, 14, mm-hmm. and I think the interceptions are going to be close. You know, right. you know right. I, I think Rutgers fans are going to have to get used to that. He's going to uh, commit some turnovers and, uh, you know, more, more to the point interceptions. So, right. you know, maybe that could be even, you know, 12, 12. Mm-hmm. Th- those numbers, Sarge, throughout intrigue me because, and I did a video on NJ.com. Some listeners may have watched it. Tom Savage in 2009 uh, didn't start the open, obviously, but played the rest of the season. 2,200 yards, 14 touchdowns, seven interceptions that year. Wow. Okay. Now, they were a 60 40 run to pass team that season. Right, right, right. But they didn't have a, like, sort of like this team, didn't have Ray Rice. I think Joe Martinick was the leading rusher with 967 yards. Now, obviously, Savage had Tim Brown and Mohamed Sanu. I think that we don't know what Art has in the receiving core yet. I, I agree with Sarge. I think 2,200 is a accurate number. Right. My guess is he throws more touchdown passes than Savage just because I don't think this is a 60-40 run to pass team. I think right. it's probably closer to 55-45, maybe even 50-50. But those interceptions are going to go up because they're going to take shots down the field. And I think fans <laughs> just have to accept that. It's like if you run a triple option, you're going to fumble the ball at some point, but there's more benefits than you know worrying about the turnovers. Same thing right. with Art. I think if, if, if he has more, if he produces more touchdowns than he does turnovers for this team, it is a wildly successful freshman I year. I don't know what that number is going to be. But if you tell me 15 touchdowns and 14 turnovers, I'm going to say that he, you know, he, he, had, he did pretty well as a freshman. Um, all right, we spent so much time talking about uh, quarterback. We got the Jay Neiman, the defensive coordinator, third year. He was in there today talking. Uh, you know, it's funny. I'm, I was looking at the depth chart for defense. It's not bad. I mean, I keep on coming back to this. Like, you know, there you got some questions on offense. You can look at this. You go, okay, well, there's a lot of things. I don't know what's going to happen. But, you know – it's this is a, this this could be a really solid defense. I mean, it, it, the front line, uh, you know, Big Ten, they're they're all Big Ten starters, I think. But yeah, depth yeah. is going to be the one thing, and you know, we'll probably talk about it later. But you know, when you lose, you know, eight guys who were all defensive guys, you know, due to the uh, you know the off field credit card fraud uh, stuff, you know, that's going to have uh, take a toll. Uh, but you look at the front uh, line, if you know, barring injuries, and that never really happens, right? They right. could be be a legitimate, much improved uh, Big Ten defense. The problem is that those those front guys can wear down yes. against Big Ten play. We had that obviously each of the last couple of years. That's been a big problem. No, and I, I think the biggest question I have for this defense, and it's something we've written about and discussed, is there going to be a pass rush? Because right. if there is more, they haven't had much of a pass rush in recent years. They've lost a lot of the sacks from last year. If they have a pass rush. Then you say, okay, well, that linebacking core is pretty good. We know that secondary might be one of the right. best in the Big Ten. Those guys can start to do things if there's a push up right. front. I just don't know if they're going to have that. And, and that is a jarring stat. The top returners and stat in sacks have one and a half each. Yes. <laughs> that is a, that but, is a really jarring but stat. But more to that, I mean, I, you know, I asked Jay Neiman about it, is stopping to run. Because in order to, to actually be successful to, to have a pass rush, you're going to have to put him in, 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 in third and long, second and long situations. That's the only a way, a way to, to go about it. So they have not been very good at stopping the run the last couple of years. That's going to be probably, in my mind, even a bigger key. You mentioned uh, really quickly that the, the charges were announced finally. It, it And I tell you, it, it couldn't have been. Rutgers has been has had problems with bad timing in the history of its program. <laughs> Obviously, nothing worse than the Mike Rice tapes coming out the, the week of the Final Four when there was nothing going on. It was in the dominated the headlines for four days. This couldn't have been better timing. I mean, this thing drops just as everything's going on uh, in Columbus. Uh, the charges were, I think, less than we might have expected uh, overall. I mean, you did some you did some digging and some documents, mm-hmm. Sarge. I mean, give, give, give us the sense of of what surprised you or what didn't surprise you. I about think this. part part of it was that it wasn't. I mean. It was a slow. We we knew in mid July when mm-hmm. we, everyone had a, gr- a grasp. Credit to Chris Ash, he addressed it back in Big Ten right, Media right. Day. Um, you know, he, ma- he made the two um, you know 
dismissals uh, in mid July, and we all kind of, you know, we were able to actually, uh, you know, peel a couple of layers off it. So by the time you actually saw the charges, I think yeah. a lot of the fan base was like, okay, well, we kind of saw this one coming. Right, so, right. you know, in, in some ways, that's a credit to Pat Hobbs and, and Chris Ash for getting in front of it as much as they could. Right. Um, as far as, um, you know, more or less, I mean, we, we had heard, and the feeling inside the program, I could, I, I could tell you, is it was less than, than initially feared. Um, certainly not on the, uh, you know, on, on KJ Gray and Brendan DeVere. Those two um, got, you know, they were charged as the ring, ringleaders, for lack of a better word. Yeah. Um, you know, beyond that, I'm not going to make any predictions. I mean, there, there's, you know, four guys who are technically still with the program, even though they're not particip- they didn't participate in training camp. You know, Chris Ash is going to wait till September 13th, the hearing on that. Um, you know, we put all the, the information, you know, on, on Saturday as far as all the charges. So, you know, fans and everyone else, the public can can, can weigh in and, on whether or not they should be uh, welcomed back. Yeah, I think Chris Ash, you know, Pat Hobbs and, and President Varshi, because it's going to go all the way up to the top yeah. of the uh, top of the, you know, the administration. I think they're all going to you know, make that decision when, you know, once we, we see what happens, if yeah. a couple of those players get PTI, which is, you know, for, you know, certain, you know, in the probation uh, type thing, maybe, you know, one or two of those guys, or maybe even, all, you know, all four of those guys get welcomed back to the program. It's going to be tough, I think, to welcome them back. Unless maybe it's, maybe it's a year long suspension or something like that, well, but it'd be hard. It'd be hard pressed to see well, them back. Well, you're talking, remember September 13th, you're talking, yes, after week two. So then you're already three weeks into the season. Um, you know, these guys haven't participated in training camp. No one knows how, how you know, the shape that they're in. Um, you know, do they get a three game right. uh, suspension yeah. on top of, of, of what they already served? I highly doubt they're going to be, you know, it's going to be like one of those, you know, time served type deal. You know, I, mm-hmm. I think you have to look at, you know, even if it's, uh, you know, PTI and they yeah. dodge a bullet, you still have to look at the charges. And a lot of these players, they did take money. Uh, you know, or allegedly they took money. So I, I think, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I, if you're, as Chris Ash has, has said all along, he has his team. You know, this is, you know, the team that, I, you know, I'm going to go to, go to, go, go to mm-hmm. war with, for lack of a better phrase. Um, I, I don't know if he's counting on any of those guys. <clears throat> it's going to be fascinating. And I, I, the, your story on it was great. And I think a lot of people, and I certainly did, the uh, the explanation or one of the explanations for why this happening about the unpaid yeah. parking tickets. And we had heard um, that. I mean, yeah. and it was, yeah. just, it was just like a, a note in one of the uh, player, pl- players. Uh, <laughs> right. You know, I don't know how much I clear. buy it. Of course, obviously, when you start when you start seeing the numbers there. They're, 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 but we've it, heard that since uh, July where, where, you know, uh, you know, Brent, uh, the, the uh point that uh, Steve is trying to make is is you know that uh, Brendan Navarra had had claimed that the whole reason why that he did this was because of or I think parking it was Gray tickets. in the or one of the no players. it was Devera, uh, according to Kobe Marfo in his interview with with police according to the complaint that he he said that he was trying to help out Brendan Navarra who had um, unpaid parking tickets so right. he had a you know a, a host of unpaid parking tickets so that was the 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 reason behind this. So I don't know if I buy it. And my, my favorite part about that was on Twitter, people were like, right away, you know, oh, I could totally, I could, tell, like, Rutgers people, like, I could totally see that well, happen. And here's the thing, and I'll tell an inside baseball story, okay? Because you know, three <laughs> years ago, um, and Steve knows where I'm going with this. Three years ago, I'm covering a board of, uh, you know, a board meeting over at uh, the College Avenue gym. I park behind, um, you know, where where I always park for wrestling or anything else. I park back there, and. Um, you know, I covered a meeting. It's probably a four hour meeting. I come back out and it's a Friday night and my car is gone. Like my, my car is gone. <laughs> and I'm looking all over like, you know, I, I'm, and I couldn't find my car. So I, 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 you know, what do you do? You call, you, you call the police. Right. And, uh, they, they sent me to over to Rutgers police. They punched in my, my, my license plate. And they said I had unpaid parking tickets, you know, stemming back for however much end up being about 350 bucks. Now the way Rutgers does it, if you're, um, or at least they, they, the way they handle it with the media, if your license plate is actually in the system, you technically w- wouldn't get a, a parking ticket. Um, the media relations guy, uh, you know, the uh, previous guy, I guess, never punched it in. I never knew I had the tickets. Uh, you know, it was one of those things where if I ever had a ticket, I would, you know, hand, hand it to the media relations guy and, and, and he would take care of it. So I had no idea that I had, you know, whatever, it's $300. <laughs> but imagine uh, coming out from an event that you worked, right. your car is gone. Yes. You know, I, the next day I had to go to, to Somerset to, you know, and, 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 and pick it up, I had to pay 150 bucks to get, get, get the car, had a little scratch on it. Like, it just was a, so I could totally see it. Well, like, yeah. The parking know. thing happens 
Uh, this this is my one of the things I love about Rutgers, and I'm going to go my little yeah. my weekly rant here. Um, and in being around this program for 20 years, you know the RU screw. Like when I first first heard that, I was like, <laughs> "What is that? What does that? What does that mean?" And then like you know, five or six years of covering Rutgers, you start okay. Everybody has got a story. Everyone who's been to Rutgers has got a story where something happened, whether it's administration or whether it's the clerk, the clerk's office or the transcript, something happened that screwed them in life before they got off his campus. And it's true. Like I, I've, I've come to believe yeah. that is, that is a unique thing to this place. That said, the RU screw also becomes like a, a cover for everything that goes wrong. And right? have you ever gone on the dark web after get, you know, go, 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 Going. No. I, I yeah, I've not, never done that. Yeah, not, not uh, usually. Two things. Now, one, uh, on a somewhat serious note, this is, I think, I think most people understand this, but I think we should just reinforce it because we've all worked on stories like this. Uh, when we report things, it's not us. There's no sources involved here for the most part. It's a police report. Yeah, this, this is, is a all Absolutely. public record. The police are saying that these things were said yeah. in an interview, obviously. On top of the charges, you can't lie to the police. When well, and, and every described. complaint, uh, you know, it says like the evidence. So I mean, they, you know, they actually say inside the complaint that the reason for 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 uh, the probable cause for for an arrest is because we have, you know, all this computer uh, history and those types of documents, and yep, then yep. video from Barnes and Noble. Yeah, you know, anytime they actually bought bought a uh, you know uh, you know allegedly bought a, a gift card, yeah. all that type of stuff is in there. The other thing I would say is I have my own parking story at Rutgers. Let's uh, hear it. When Let's I was in high school. I, I forget what it was. My dad and I came to visit the school because I said last week you know, I, I did get in. It was accepted New Jersey accepted students day. On the way out, my dad said, "Hey, let's swing by and look at the football stadium." He hadn't really seen it. Obviously, wherever I went to school, football was going to be a big part of my college experience. We literally parked the car outside the stadium. I think walked around, looked in. You know, we see the the statue is. Walked back to the car. Ninety seconds. He had a parking warning ticket, mm. and he just was like, how of all time on accepted students day, when you know people are looking at your school, to have one ceasefire right. on the parking stuff when it's a wide open lot and there's like two cars there. People don't know this because I'm so important to have a VIP spot, permit I can park wherever I want on campus. That's not true. Okay, all right, let's move on to football. And you guys want to talk about the good stuff. Let's go to the true and false segment, which is, of course, our uh, fan favorite, at least one person on Twitter told me they liked it, so that's good enough for me. Are you guys ready? ready? True or false? I've got like eight questions here. Ready. Uh, all right. True or false? Fans will be chewing their nails in the third quarter of the Texas State game. False. 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 Two falses. All right. Uh, true or false? We talked about a little bit, but Art will have more touchdowns than turnovers. True or false? True. True. Okay. For the Texas State game? For the whole season. For the whole season? True. Wow. A lot of faith in the kid. All right. True or false? The run pass breakdown will be 60 40 in favor of the run. True or false? False. False? False. That's wow, a lot. Both false. It's a lot. It's a lot. You're right. Uh, true or false? The MVP of this defense will be linebacker Trevor Morris. True or false? False. False. All right. The MVP of this defense will be defensive lineman Kevin Wilkins. True or false? False. <sighs> I love the kid. I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to say false. Two falses? All right. The MVP of this defense will be Bless Austin. True or false? True. Okay, one true. False. All right. Well, then we're going to have to find out who the heck I've run out of players. All right. Uh, Deontay uh, Roberts. Deontay Roberts. Deontay Roberts is your guy. Middle linebacker. All right. All right. Uh, True or false? The offensive line will be the most pleasant surprise on this team. False. False. One false. 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 I, th- I think it might be. That's why I put it on here, damn it. All right. <laughs> and true or false, the most improved player on this team will be wide receiver Bo Melton. True or false? True. Okay. False. All right. I, I mean, okay. Well, let's go through them. And I, I, I yeah. put that on by the offensive line because, again, we're talking about areas that are a big concern. Uh, and then you see a guy like Tariq Cole walk into that media room. I mean, he is still your 6'6", 320-pound yeah. NFL prospect guy at left tackle, you plug some people around there. I mean, I know there's, I realize the the line is a concern. Uh, I think it's going to be better than people think. Disagree? My big thing with the line is this. Tariq Cole is a standout. I think Jonah Jackson has proven he might, he might be in that argument by the end of the year with Cole, the best lineman on the team. Mm -hmm. Uh, But 
Kamal Seymour, you know, what are you going to get out of him at right tackle? Right. Mike Lonsdorf's already going to be questionable. We, we haven't really seen a whole lot of him in live action. I think there's some concerns about Mike Maietti. I mean, yeah. he struggled in the spring. It's just, that'd be the some, one. Yeah. The, it, the center is like the one question. AJ Blazik has developed guys and that's great, mm-hmm. but it's one thing to develop them in the spring and the summer and have them look at it. It's another to get through a big 10 season. And if those guys go down or there's issues, I don't know if there's a lot of depth behind them ready yet to right, compete right. in the conference. Yeah. And I, I think James on Thursday asked, asked Chris Ash something about the offensive line and defensive line. And <laughs> I, I don't think Chris is the vibe that I got was he's not uh, all that optimistic about the offensive line, you know, as much as, you know, we, we, we look at it um, again, I think, uh, you know, my Eddie, you know, he was replaced, you know, after he held the job uh, a year ago and then sprint by all accounts, didn't, you know, he got passed over in the spring. He's obviously had a pretty good training camp. You know, that would probably be, you know, the in- interior. But you know, Tariq Cole's certainly one of the best left tackles in the team. <clears throat> so what do you think the most pleasant surprise will be if you had to pick one area of this team? I think it's actually going to be the defensive line. Because I think one of the reasons why Chris reacted that way was because Wilkins, Pateki, Turner, I think they feel confident, okay, these guys are Big Ten quality defensive mm-hmm. linemen. Uh, Loomer, I think, is is a big X factor for them. They need him to be that guy off the edge that helps them get a pass rush. But I think other than that, I mean, look, you know, Dugan, maybe he steps up, turn it off. There's, there are younger guys there I think yeah. they feel they can roll in. T1 Mason's had a really good camp. I just think that's – I think Chris was basically kind of telling us that he feels better about the starting four on the defensive line yeah. than he does in the starting five on the offensive just not, line. Just not – well, you wish there were more size, but you um, always do it with Rutgers in the defensive line. But, yeah, I, I see your point there. I'm going to say Sorry. running game. Running game, I mean, and, and certainly from the – depth chart uh, perspective, the news would be Blackshear, uh, Raheem Blackshear over Jonathan Hill. Were you surprised Hill, by that? You were surprised by that, yeah. Yeah, and I, I, you know, I don't know come uh, kickoff that, that that'll be the case because, you know, they're, they're going to play four of them probably. Right. You know, Blackshear, Hilleman, uh, Sneed, and then Pacheco. Um, I think they're going to be a lot better in the running game. I think John McNulty is not just empty words. He's going to emphasize it. Um, I think that'll be you know, the, 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 the one area where people look back and like, wow, that's a big improvement from a year ago. Yeah, who's going to be the best? Is it going to be Pacheco, the best running back, the freshman, talented freshman from South Jersey? I mean, who, the, I mean obviously you got experience in Hilleman coming, coming, coming in. Uh, but, you know, again, I don't know that he's the same level uh, of, of a transfer as uh, his name's escaped me from last year. Gus Edwards. Uh, yeah, Gus Edwards. I mean, yeah. what, what do you think is going to, what do you think is going to be happening? Um, I think it's going to be very close, yeah. and Blackshear is going to have the most touches. I just don't see him as an every down I back. I don't, me neither. And I, but I wish I would have seen a little bit more training camp. And 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 that's not a knock against the media policy. I, I'm just sure it is. <laughs> well, kidding. we've heard so much about Pacheco, and we've seen some yeah. stuff, yeah. some glimpses of him, and he looks really, really good. Um, I, I I think. Pacheco by by you know week by the second half of the season has a very good chance to be be, yeah. be the every down you know or, or or the guy who gets a lion's share of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, I think Pacheco will probably have the most yards. Look, I I think with Blackshear, the way you need to look at it is. I think he's going to get the most touches of the running back group. I just don't think they're necessarily going to be all carries. I think yeah. Blackshear is a guy who they're going to have all over the place. Right. I mean, I, I it's an educated guess. Like 15 to 20 touches, mm-hmm. I think, is what they want. Return game, it's a weapon in the passing game, whatever. I think Hillman starts the year as kind of like the, the featured back. But I think Pacheco, I, I used to think, okay, maybe Pacheco will take it away by the end of the season. I mean – if I had to make a bold prediction, Pacheco is going to do something on Saturday that makes the fan base go nuts. You know, bust a seventy-yard <laughs> no run. Going back. I can yeah, see that. And, yeah. Uh-huh. and it'll just be a situation right. where he gets five touches against Texas State. He, you know, maybe he takes a step back against Ohio State. But by mid-season, when they come back for the November, I think Pacheco is going to be the, the lead back. Fascinating stuff. But All Blackshear right. can be on the field as much or as more as those guys, but just in different ways. So we, we didn't have enough time to get to piss off any fan bases this week. So I thought I'd try a little something new, and I, I put a little mailbag out. I asked, P, I asked our Twitter friends if they have any questions. And as always, you know, we have some very educated Twitter followers who 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 have good questions. One of them, my maybe my favorite guy on Twitter, Kevin Fine, uh, who I know you all interact with, had a great question. If you could change one thing immediately about the athletic department, what would it be? If you were Pat Hobbs today, Cratch, yes, and suddenly you found yourself in charge of the entire athletic department, what would be the first thing you changed? I would play Princeton in men's basketball, 
and I would play Army in football every year or every other year. I, I think that one of the things that Rutgers kind of lacks is a sense of, you know, and I think that the, the, the scheduling philosophy playing regional schools is mm-hmm. good. Just kind of like a, build a tradition here, you know. You, you hear the term, you know, Rutgers is 100 years behind, you know, in certain things. But uh, the biggest, I just have never understood why, and I understand the reasons why, and it's political and everything, right. but you got to play Princeton in hoops every year. I mean, that's just something that had centuries of, of tradition. Yeah. And if you can't do it in football, I think you got it. You do it in wrestling every year and it's great and people are right. excited do it in men's basketball just move move beyond that hey if you lose Steve Peichel game, line one Steve Peichel line one <laughs> no I just think it, he, he it, probably would argue against this just, but I understand your point I don't understand how Rutgers cannot play <laughs> yeah. Princeton in basketball every year Sarge you got one yeah I got one I, I would say somehow some way you need to, to get more people into the in, into the seats and you know just as a little uh preview uh, like the it's the season ticket sales are, are you know, flatlining or are, are, are pretty much the same as, as a year ago. You know, there's not a whole lot of optimism that they're going to get over 40,000 fans. How do you do it? I've heard different ideas, and one of them is, you know, for, for season ticket holders, allow them to actually give them an extra ticket, bring a buddy to the game. Whatever you got to do, and there are people who are less smarter than I am as far as marketing. I just, yeah, you have to somehow, some way, attract more fans to these games. Um, it's, it's going to be, you know, I think it's going to be one of the stories of the year. It's year three in, in, in Chris Ash. You know, can can you get more of a following, more, the fan base, you know, to, to, to rally behind this program? That's a, that's a great one, and uh, you stole what I was going to say, actually. But uh, – <laughs> I was actually looking at your laptop. Yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, but no, the, the, the if I, so the, the another, another thing I would do, and this is this is obviously Pat Hot. Pat has done a great job of building facilities, and we we look at, we see construction every time we're here. I mean, I think that uh, the one dramatic shift pretty quickly has to be putting money into the football facilities, yeah. uh, and I just see these things pop up all over the all over the conference with Northwestern and Minnesota, and they're opening these brand new incredible places and they still have that bubble. Well, yeah. They've got to replace the bubble. The bubble is an issue. I mean, that would be the first thing. On a football pro day, they snowed and their NFL prospects had to go up to the jet facility. That's a problem. Right. And that's good. Yeah. And that's going to piss off our other favorite, uh, (laughs) other favorite Twitter person, Dave White, when I say we need to take resources away from basketball and funnel them through football. But I think it's got to be that's got to be a priority. One thing I'll add, sort of along all these lines, uh, Chris Ash today was he was asked about the schedule, and he kind of had this. I, I thought it was somewhat like impassioned, you know, like Ru- someone decided to put Rutgers in the Big Ten. Yeah. Obviously, before he was here, you know, this is the schedule you got to deal with. It. That's one of the things I, I've kind of noted. <laughs> I love that answer, by the way. I it was great. He had a big smile on like, his face. It was a great answer. You know, I think Rutgers fans sometimes. You're in the Big Ten. Right. Like, Ohio State, Michigan and Penn State and Ohio State come to Piscataway every right. other year. Like, yes. and, and I think at some point, I think most fans are, but, like, like I, I it boggles my mind, like, we'll write something about, like, the Big Ten. Where people, I don't want to read, but, like, you're in the Big Ten. Like, <laughs> it's just big, accept exactly. it. Like, embrace yes. it. You're in the it. best conference awesome. in America. Absolutely. It's awesome. And I nothing think, better than like, having this. Stop. Right, this I just, that's one of the things that's always yep. kind of fascinated me is that there's not an excitement of, like, yes, I understand that Rutgers is maybe near the bottom of the conference. Conference, right. but you're you're working your way up. Yep, yep. Still, you're in the Big Ten. Like, stop worrying about the schedule because the schedule is always going to be tough. I thought yeah. Chris was great. Right. You're, that, the Big Ten. You know, it Tulsa's not moving into the be. Big Ten of course. anytime soon. Right. And the best part of being in the Big Ten, as you know, is like it's just always about football. It's always quiet. No no headlines. And, exactly. You know, there's always you can, you can focus on the, between those hash marks and nothing else. Exactly. Yeah. There's never yeah, any yeah, negative yeah. headlines or anything with any of these. Programs. All right. So Texas State, we have we we have sort of mentioned them. Cratch, can you like without boring us with facts? <laughs> can you can you tell us a little bit about Texas State and answer the question? What can Rutgers lose this game? Yeah, I mean, I think anybody can lose any game. Oh, thanks, Coach. Come on, but get, re- realistically, no, no, they wow. can't. Long Texas game at State, a time, one game at a time. Look at him; he's dropping cliches on us. <laughs> Mid season, mid season form. This uh, guy, it's trying... impressive. Look, hey, I, I had some. <laughs> at least someone had press press <laughs> after you know, uh, between you and me, Dunley exactly. a year ago. At least someone finally brings uh, someone. Up. Th- exactly. this, is, this is the one thing I think should worry Rutgers. Texas State ran the ball okay last year. They were v- top fifty nationally, stopping the run. That's the one thing that I think has to keep John McNulty and Chris Ash concerned is that this team, they were a horrible team. Like, in the 100s in overall defense, 
and their their secondary is like Swiss cheese apparently. But they stop the run. They bring back most of their front seven. They have a new defensive coordinator. Ash said this. They don't really know what exactly they're going to do. Mm-hmm. And when you want to get Art first start, you want to make him comfortable. The best way to do that is to establish the run. I think right. there's a chance that Texas State gives him some issues there. Yeah. That's the one thing you have to be yeah. concerned about. And they're going to have athletes because it's Texas. Yeah. I mean, um, you just step outside your front door you would and think. you're going to find somebody to play. Yeah. And they, there have been some games, I, I, they spring to mind, that they Rutgers has had a significant talent advantage. Like, what is it, Norfolk State one yeah. year was 6 nothing. I don't remember yeah. exactly the d- details. Sarge, your th- is this going to yeah, be? Yeah, I mean, I, the one thing that would concern me, I guess, you know, Texas State has a, a dual threat quarterback who they named as their starter today, and, you know, Jay, Jay Neiman made him out like he was like JT Barrett. I mean, <laughs> I and, really. That could be Coach Meek more than anything, yeah. but I mean, the, you know, dual threat quarterbacks have uh, presented an issue. Um, and the other thing is, you know, because Rutgers, you know, offense has changed, they're a pro style now. You know, the defense has been yep. going up against pro style, you know, throughout training camp, throughout spring camp. You know, how do they, you know, deal with a, you know, dual threat quarterback, a spread? Um Again, I, I think that would probably be the one issue where, you know, right. quarterback, if he can make some plays, maybe it makes, it, it makes the game interesting. Prediction, give me a score, and the player that people are going to walk out going, whoa, how about that kid? Crat, you go first. Uh, Texas State loses. To, <laughs> I, 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 Rutgers wins 49-17. Mm-hmm, and I, I'll go with Isaiah Pacheco. Said Pacheco I think he's going to do something very impressive. Okay. And then it's going to become, you know, like, all right, we got to get this guy to ball more. Sarge? 31-14, Rutgers. Close. Um, close, close. Is that close? Pretty close yeah, for Texas State. Up. All right. Uh, okay. No, I said Rutgers are going to win, though. Yeah, I know, but that's okay. still I, – I, yeah. And then, uh, uh, you know, as far – I mean, we, we don't really talk about him, and he's actually listed as a starter, uh, no surprise, but Shameen Jones. I mean, you know, when you said you didn't follow up on the, uh, you know, most improved, and you said Bo Mellon, you know, Shameen Jones registered it a year ago. So yeah. when you're talking yeah. about improvement – We still haven't seen him. I, 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 I But everyone within the program, you know, really thinks he's going to be a big-time guy. I think he might be the, the guy where you're like, oh, well, I never heard of this guy, and then – yeah, you know, all of a well, sudden he shows up with two touchdowns. You're going to hear about him if you read NJ.com later this week. No, we'll we'll foreshadow it there. All right, I'm going to pick a, a complete blowout, like 40 to 7. Uh, and I think this is the kind of game that defense is going to score a couple touchdowns. Picking a player completely at random, I'm going to go with Saquon Hampton is going to be the, the guy who's going to get one in the end zone. All right, so this is the fun part. If you've come this far, if you've listened this long, you need a treat at this point. So we've been renaming the podcast. We're trying to come up with a new name for the podcast. Uh, but as part of this, too, for some reason last week, I played the Match Game theme song as introduction music. Uh, so I thought every week now I will play a theme song from a game show and see if Sarge can figure out which one it is. And here we go. Do you know, do you know it? I like it. I don't know what it is, though. Come on. From your childhood. It was on. It was on. I was dating myself. Whammy? It was on after... After um, Joker's Wild, no whammy, no whammy, no whammy. Nobody, Anything? no. Wink Martin, Wink Martindale. Does that help you? Wink Martindale. Like host of every game show. Wink? No. If you're born with the name Wink, by the way, <laughs> are you like destined to be a, a game show host? Is there anything else you could be? I know. What a name. Like, for a game like show Jeeves, host. that you're destined to be I mean, a you know, butler. All right. It's the Tic Tac Doe theme song. Ah, come on. Yes. You are 0 and 1, and I'm very disappointed. <laughs> I am 0 and 1. All right, so we put three names up there last week. Ooh, by, by no surprise, my choice of Julia Herman's Playhouse. It was close, though. Was it, clo- was it close? <laughs> yeah, 154 total votes. <laughs> oh, Hopefully, we have more well. than that. <laughs> 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 That is truly a democracy in action. There. Yes. Were there any like the Louis, were there any Louis, were there any Louisville IP addresses? Can you actually see whether or not she actually weighed in? And uh, weighed in? No, that's a Julie Herman's Playhouse one with forty three percent of the vote. <laughs> no, Night just... Vision, which according to Danny Breslauer, our pal, yeah. was the original name for our vision. Right. That came on strong at the end with forty percent. My suggestion, a river runs through it. Yeah. Way in the back with 17%. All right. So much better. All right. So what do you got this week? You got one for me? I just, it's on my mind, but the are you screw? Why not embrace it? The why screw not, podcast? Why not own it? Yeah, what are you going to call it? Are you screw? You know? That's, uh, well, give me, it has to be, what's, what's the it? name? This are you screw? Yeah. Are, are you screw? screw a Rutgers podcast? Yeah. All right. Okay. I like it. All right. Uh, you Scarlet come? Night, Holy Night. No. <laughs> no, actually, seriously, we had. Uh, when we had discussed this off air, and then we was like, "Yeah, we're not gonna do that." But several people mentioned it to me, Night Court. 
I, it sounds like a basketball thing, does, which is the reason problem. why I think we're, we're hesitant to go that way. Um, but – Look, if we could like get a photo shoot and someone gets the Harry Anderson hat, I mean that would look kind of cool. I, 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 night Court's <laughs> not bad. Harry Anderson passed Which, away this year. Yeah, the late, late, late great Harry you Anderson. Know, I was going to play the Night Court theme song, but there's an ad. Uh, <laughs> all right, this my 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 choice, my selection this week is Pod Scataway. like Piscataway, Pod Scataway. Not bad. No, it's not great. No, it's really not great. No, no. not good. We we need you guys to help us. Not good. Yeah, we, we need help from the We've unloaded our best options. So. Wait, so, and, and as I mentioned before, because there are so many podcasts for Rutgers now, I'm, I'm on another one this week. Mike Vorkanoff has a podcast. You know that? Going to be another good Yeah. All right. So I'm going to walk you out with the, the night court theme. I don't know if you can actually hear this on there or not. We're so low tech. Oh. All right, everybody. A blast from the past. Thank you for listening to the week one podcast. We promise we'll be in midseason form next week when we're back to recap the Texas State game. Steve Politi, Keith Sargent, James Cratch signing off. Thanks for listening. Thank you.